Good afternoon, I'm Daryl Stranger filling in for Melissa Ridgen. Today we're putting pizza, yes, the, the delicious mouth-watering food that everyone enjoys in focus. We'll be joined from coast to coast today with a variety of chefs and restaurant owners who all enjoy a common food. You guessed it, it's pizza. We'll be joined by Mr. Bannock himself, Paul Natral from Vancouver. He owns a food truck in Vancouver and he'll be showing us his technique on how to make the perfect Bannock pizza. Also joining us today is James O'Rourke, also known as Jimmy Two Times or Jimmy Num Nums for his delicious pizza in Northern Manitoba. Then we will go all the way to Weigelmack, uh, I don't think I'm saying that right, but I'll get that cleared later in the show, Nova Scotia, and take a look at Sky Mountain Pizza. They just recently opened and the demand is already just huge. Plenty in store for you today, so hopefully you won't be too hungry after today's show, but no promises. I know I'm going to be sticking right there with you. We want, and we also want you to join in on our conversation. You can tweet us at APTN in Focus or email infocus at aptn.ca. Now, before I introduce you to our guests, let's set the scene a little bit. And a warning, this story may have you working up an appetite already. I know the show just started, so bear with us. Let's start in the north, in the Northwest Territories, where our reporter Charlotte Moore Jacobs takes us to Lutzel K to see what's cooking. So right now I'm preparing pizza sauce. It's a Dene take on a fan favorite, mouth-watering muskox pizza. Cameron Enzo is only 20 years old and making a name for himself as an entrepreneur. I've gotten my friends involved. I've paid the money to do, to do lots of tasks like sell pop, Go and uh, go and be a part of my, my own canteen. Do surveys on what what pop sold the most at what times. Located in the remote 300 person community of Litzelke, Northwest Territories, he's been selling his product for roughly three years. The ooey gooey goodness goes for forty five dollars a pie, and he can sell anywhere from fifteen to thirty pizzas over a weekend. He sticks to similar ingredients as a deluxe, with peppers, pepperoni, and cheese. Everybody in town is mostly the same. There are people who like, who like pineapples. Pineapple is actually extremely hard to get, so it's it's better for me as a as a businessman not to, but not to sell to those specific types of people, because I won't be gaining as much markup as I would buying the pineapples. It'd mostly just stay at home. A key topping sustainably harvested muskox. The secret is knowing where your uh, animal was. I may have not shot the animal, but I was always a part of like either, either help, helping uh, bring the meat back home, um, grounding up the meat. That was usually always my job. His ventures do come with opinions. In some Dene communities, there's protocol on not selling country foods like dry meat. They didn't say, hey, why are you doing this? But I have had people tell me that I've been talked about and they don't necessarily agree with it. They think I'm kind of uh, stealing from the land. I definitely feel bad that I have to disagree with them because I feel like with this with this like stuff that I'm doing, I'm definitely prospering and I'm bringing more customers to Lutzelke to hopefully guides and st for people to so people can do guides take them around tell them about the land Enzo plans to expand his ventures selling through the Litzke Dene First Nations Frontier Lodge and maybe even to Yellowknife establishments with my idea of expansion to hopefully Yellowknife and like freezing pizza and sending it to Yellowknife people the people will be more inclined to visit Litzke cuz like they see they see this awesome like pizza that this big boy in, in Lutzel came made. Oh Charlotte Mort Jacobs, APTN National News, Lutzel okay. mm. This is really good. A great way to start our show and our first guest joining me today is Paul Natral, better known as Mr. Bannock. He owns a food truck in Vancouver and is director at the Indigenous Culinary of Associated Nations. He has specialized in Indigenous cuisine indigenous cuisine, excuse me, for over 10 years. Now, Chef Natral, thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, it's a very awesome topic. And I have a big tribe and this is one of their favorites for sure. So what is it about pizza that makes it universally loved just 
you know, everywhere. <clears throat> yeah, so I think uh, there's a variety. So you can have like thin crust, you can have uh, like a Chicago style, Bannock style, like thick crust, you know, and just your favorite toppings. Like it's, it's really good. All right, so what's your dream pizza? Give us a nice detailed description. Yeah, so I think uh, obviously a Bannock pizza. <laughs> uh, it's really good. I would love doing like a smoked chicken or a smoked pork uh, with some bacon, obviously, and maybe a barbecue sauce and uh, some like fresh grated Parmesan and chili flakes on there. It'd be awesome. All right, you're making me hungry already. Um, so no matter where you are in the country, people will insist that they know the best pizza joint. Um, why is there this passion to claim that title? I mean, no one's even really asking and people are just putting out, putting it out there loudly and proudly. Yeah, I guess, uh, just, to, just to have a hot spot that people can come to and enjoy your, your style, right? I guess more so bragging rights than anything. <laughs> Um, so fried chicken, Chinese, or pizza, what do you think is most popular with Indigenous people? Ooh. Tough question, uh, I know. Yeah, that's a tough one. If uh, if you sat down with a table of me and my family, I think it would be straight down the middle. <laughs> yeah. And it'd come down to rock, paper, scissors, you know? <laughs> <laughs> rock, paper, scissors, maybe flip a coin, too. Um, so a little bit about you. How did you get started on, on your uh, journey as a chef? What, what got you started in cooking? Yeah, so uh, I grew up in the kitchen with my mother and my grandmother and uh, just got to see how they cook like really rustic and home style meals every night. Um, I had a lot of a lot of people in the house, so they'd be cooking for a little army every night, you know. And I just grew from there, like passion and going to culinary school and realizing that there's a lot missing for indigenous food culture. And that just really narrowed down what I wanted to do. What were some of the things that they taught you that uh, you still keep with today? Uh, the Bannock for sure. <laughs> my, uh, my grandmother that I lived with because uh, she took me and my sisters and my mom in when my dad passed away but she always did a, a baked bannock and that was always good and it was a bit healthier right um you can just do almost anything with it uh hers was uh her favorite was having it toasted like almost burnt like you can see like a lot of dark spots but with a little bit of butter and jam and then my other grandmother did a, a fried bread as well, right? So, like they say, like indigenous food culture is obviously regional, but uh, each family has different recipes that they're known for. So, you can always learn and experience new things, you know? Mm -hmm, for sure. And uh, I don't have a nickname, uh, nothing close or cool as yours. How did Mr. Bannock all come about? <laughs> Yeah, it's a pretty funny story because uh, when I uh, I was a single father of five kids for a long time, but uh, when I met my partner now, Kelly, uh, she would chat with some of her girlfriends and they'd be asking how, sh how she's doing and uh, what's the story with uh, Mr. Bannock? Because <laughs> uh, they knew that I like started freshly started my own business and I was doing the markets and the farmers markets, the night markets and all that stuff. Right. It was uh, right before I launched the Mr. Bannock food truck. So it was actually a nickname that I got from my partner's friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, very cool. And uh, the fact you have a nickname is already a step up on me and I'm sure a lot of people. Um, and speaking of the food truck, why did you want to open up a food truck as opposed to a restaurant? Yeah, so obviously uh, financial reasons. It's a lot cheaper than having a brick and mortar. Uh, I spent probably about 60K altogether in 
on the food truck but if you get into a brick and mortar it's anywhere from like 100k up to a million bucks depending on location you know and uh and just to be able to drive on the res and say there's mr bannock <laughs> no i'm kidding <laughs> Um, and are you are you looking at expanding at all? Maybe getting another food truck or possibly a restaurant down down the road at all? Yeah, for sure. I started uh, recently started a, a second company where it's franchisable. For it's called Mr. Bannock Coffee House, and uh, the goal is to teach other Indigenous communities to to learn like the ins and outs of the food service, and hopefully get some. Uh, experience in other communities doing indigenous food culture and chef natural before we let you go uh do you have any advice for maybe some young aspiring chefs or uh just people who might be uh making their own pizza and thinking hey maybe i could sell this yeah like it's always fun to just be at home and cook uh it's in in my zen when i'm at at home in my kitchen uh the good thing about doing that is you can put as much as you like and leave all the other stuff out <laughs> but just have fun and be creative like uh play in the kitchen like <clears throat> how many times i was in the kitchen just testing out stuff and there's a lot of stuff that i did not like and enjoy that i created but uh you just take notes and try be better than what you did yesterday right well, great, great advice indeed. And I can't thank you enough for joining us here, kicking off our show. That's all about pizza. Thank you so much. Yeah, okay. it's a pleasure. You folks have a good day. All right, we need to step aside for a quick break, but you're going to want to stick around. When we come back, Paul Natral will show us how to make a Bannock pizza from scratch. And all I can say is I wish I had one with me here right now. Stick around. Station now. Call in toll free at 1 877 647 2786. Like us on Facebook on our APTN News page. Follow or tweet us at APTN in Focus. And send your thoughts to infocus at APTN.ca. And in Focus. Well, it seems like everyone has a favorite pizza place or a way of making their own pizza. And many of our communities have beloved pizza shops or people who cook and just sell pizzas on occasion from their own homes. Well, our social media editor, Jesse Andrushko, got a lot of recommendations online and joins us now. Jesse. Thanks, Daryl. We asked online for people to share their favorite pizzas and we got a lot of submissions. Let's take a look at a few, but keep in mind, this will make you hungry. First from Anthony, his cousin Joshua from Lake St. Martin, known as the Pizza Man, made this delicious pie. Anthony said that on a good day, the Pizza Man can make 10 or more pizzas with his wife and sons. Looks amazing. Jenner shared their deadly homemade pizza, one half veggie with peppers, tomato, mushroom, and the other half cheese. Mouthwatering. Here's one from Caitlin, an indigenous lawyer by day, foodie and pizza maker by night, mozzarella, pepperoni, jalapeno, basil, pesto, and hot honey, dough hand rolled and made from scratch with her partner Robert, mouthwatering. Greek pizza anyone? Bev in Watson Lake makes these tasty pizzas to order. Cheese, peppers, looks delightful. Here's a homemade pizza from Roberta in Carcross, Yukon. A healthy dose of cheese and sausage. Roberta says that everyone in her little community is always asking to make her to make pizzas. I don't blame them, Roberta. Looks amazing. Crystal's favorite pizza comes from Albert Jones in Escanoba Ditch, First Nation. She shared a drool-worthy picture with mushrooms, pepperoni, peppers. Totally drool-worthy. Tracy nominated Jan's Pizza. She shared a picture of the Janzerati saying it's to die for. I agree, looks very, very good. From Puckinawag in Manitoba, Taya shared her Res XL loaded pizza with pepperoni, salami, cheese, bell peppers, mushrooms, pineapples, hamburgers, and bacon. Love it, especially the pineapple. Rena is carrying on tradition, copying her mom who always made pizza homemade dough and shredded pepperoni with veggies and lots of cheese. Mm. From Pimene Mutang First Nation, Tyler shared this masterpiece from a local pizza maker, Sheila McLean. Sign me up, the crust looks so, so good. T 
Taina, a member of Attawapiskat First Nation, living in Thunder Bay, shared some wood-fired pizza. Look at that mozzarella just melting off the side. Another drill-worthy one for sure. Lastly, from Lorna in Lustiger's Quebec, her husband Lanson, owner and operator of Nelly's Pizza, makes some delicious, unique pizzas. Here's their pickle pizza. Very, very cool. Good stuff. Thank you for everyone who shared their pictures. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be actually posting more of these online over the week on the InFocus Twitter page and on APTN News Facebook page. If you want to share your favorite pizza, here's how. Join our conversation now. Send your thoughts to infocus at aptn.ca, like us on Facebook on our APTN News page, and follow or tweet us at APTN InFocus. All right, thanks for that, Jesse. That's definitely a lot of great looking pizzas there. Not so sure about pineapple on pizza, but uh, we'll leave that for another discussion. And it is now time for a lesson in Bannock pizza making. Paul Natral has a great video on how to make the perfect Bannock pizza crust right from scratch. Welcome to my home in West Vancouver, BC. We're in the traditional territories of my people, the Squamish Nation. Uh, tonight, I just wanted to do a, a free cooking demo for everybody who got our awesome classic bannock mix under the tree this year. Uh, yeah, we have two different kinds. Uh, we're gonna have one with pepperoni, one with uh, prosciutto, uh, and my partner Kelly always does this awesome pesto sauce and also tomato sauce that we do every summer. And then we got some fresh basil, we got some mozzarella, we're gonna grate some for the pepperoni and we're gonna slice some for the prosciutto. And I don't know if you guys can see all of these nice jars here. They're all labeled on top. And then on the bottoms, you can see clearly what they are. So if you got regular canned tomatoes, ours is jarred. We use it, we just do it plain, but you can doctor it up. So we're gonna kind of do uh, like a homemade Italian. We got powdered garlic, some dried thyme, basil, oregano salt, pepper, and a little bit of chili flakes. Yeah. So who's ready to get cooking? If you got the bannock mix, crack it open right now. But I'm using a, a KitchenAid mixer for mine. So on each bannock mix that everybody gets sent to their homes or picked up at the kitchen is four cups of flour. That's three, this is four. That one's good. It's four tablespoons of baking powder. One, two, three, and four. And then four tablespoons of salt, sugar. One, two, three, four. And then four teaspoons of salt. This is one of my favorite parts. I was just having a conversation with some of the kids recently about what Bannock really is. Like with these two, baking powder and salt is pretty much a science. It expands the dough. One, two, three, four. A lot of people use baking powder and salt method, or other people use the yeast method. Uh, yeast and sugar also expands it helps the, the bread fluff up some. So this is the crucial part where all the magic happens. So we got all of that mixing there. I'm gonna crank it up a little bit more. We 
if you guys have the Bannock mix, all of this is already pre-mixed, so you don't have to do any of this. But I'm doing mine from scratch, so I'm just mixing it. So like I said, this is two cups here. I'm gonna do about one of these and then a half. So you slowly add it. And as it adds, you crank it up a little bit more. That was a little bit high. You can, you can see that the dough trying to form there. It needs some more water. formed and clumped together so that's good now you just turn it up high let that mix just for like two minutes and while that's mixing I'll come over here I already started preheating the oven I put it at 400 degrees And the, the good thing about making pizza is like, I gave you guys a recipe, yes, but they're just guidelines. Uh, the main thing you have to follow is for the Bannock mix. Uh, you can add as much seasonings or different kind of toppings you want. The joys about making your own stuff at home. You can add as much or as little as anything you want. Uh, me personally, I really love pesto so I'll put a little bit extra of that on there so this is probably about maybe two cups there so the second one I'm come have a look here I'm just gonna slice this one I'm gonna cut it in half and then we're just gonna do some slices. So on a, a tip here, pro tip, if you guys are kneading, kneading stuff from like scratch, you pound it down, you pull the top, you pull it and push in, till, turn it, pull, push, pull, push, pull, push, pull and push. And then at the end, grab it and form a ball just like so here we go the bannock dough is ready to go just, yeah, just make sure it's scored in all the corners all the edges so you don't get any big bubbles when it's cooking Smells so good. Again, it's about four tablespoons per pizza. But like I said, besides the dough, it's pretty much to your own likings. Oh man, you can smell the fresh basil. You get a hint of that garlic on there. And again, the recipe called for about 100 grams, but like I said, you can add as much or as little as you like. You're making it, so you call the shots, folks. We got the pesto down. We got a tiny bit of shredded mozzarella. We got the prosciutto. Now we're gonna finish it with the sliced mozzarella. 
It ain't easy being cheesy. <laughs> I always say that to my boys when they're down. It's pretty funny. So boom. Bannock pizza. Score. Make the dough, score it. Pesto, shredded matzo, the toppings, like the meat, and then the sliced mozzarella. So oven's at 400. I'm gonna throw that in here. Like so. Boom. Put a timer on. <clears throat> Kitchen timer, we'll do four minutes and then we'll rotate it. I had many great mentors that taught me various foods. I did pastas and pizzas, I did wok cooking, I did Greek food, I did Asian food. That's how I create fusion indigenous foods. Boom. All right. So, I know this is the one everybody's been waiting for. What did I do with that other spoon? <clears throat> so I'm gonna pour some of the tomato sauce homemade tomato sauce folks from the summertime we got some dried oregano just a dash of that a dash of thyme just like that a dash of basil some pepper garlic some pickling salt check it out so there's a, a, a doctored up tomato sauce there give that a quick mix Ooh, you can see all the herb action there. That looks pretty decent. Four. Oh yeah, you can see the all the herbs and spices that we just put in there and mix it up. bit of that, the mozzarella, it's time while well, that's done, we're gonna rotate the pizza, I grabbed a big flipper, just grab it and rotate it, so I rotated it, put it under, gave about a quarter turn, We'll do another timer. We'll do five minutes. Go. Oh. Kitchen timer, five minutes. Not the actual, don't start the microwave. <laughs> Yeah, we got this awesome fresh, uh, some freshly sliced pepperoni. But you can use your favorite, your favorite kind of meats that you got, whatever's available there.
and uh, yeah, when we did the pizza, the pizza dinner here, when my kids were here, I think I did uh, three, three dough balls, and we got eight, eight doughs, like personal pizzas, and then we had an extra one for pizza pockets and uh, focaccia. So, bannock dough, doctored up, tomato sauce, your favorite meat, and then we're gonna go with the mozzarella. Freshly grated, folks. Oh my God, I wish you guys were here to smell it. I'm pretty sure all of your guys' kitchens are smelling really good right about now. And like I said, you're making this, so feel free to add more or less of what you like and what you don't like. I added all of that mozzarella. Boom. I'm gonna add just a touch of these around the around the crust on this one. Just kick it up a little notch. That's good. That one's ready to go. Also, we got some fresh basil here. I'll show you guys a couple ways to do it. Uh, that's good for the first one. But pick the biggest ones that you can. So it's three of each. So, so you grab all three of them. You know, come over here for a sec. Grab all three and roll it just as tight as you can get it. Just like so. And grab your knife, make sure it's nice and sharp, and then cut it as thin as you can get it. And that's called a chiffonade. Ooh! Dang! Oh ho ho! Let's pull that bad boy out. Oh yeah. Look at that. So we'll put the basil up there. That one there. And dust this one off a little bit more. Sometimes this gets a little messy, folks. So get any of the wet stuff off of there. That one's good. Kitchen timer. Seven minutes. Start. Put it back on bake. Four hundred. All right. So come and have a look here, folks. You can see the the crust is nice and golden on the edges. You can see the caramelization on the cheese. This is one of my favorite ones to use, especially on pizza night. Thank you, Sue. So I cut it. That's four. And then you go in half again. So you get eight pieces per pizza. Mm. 
Bada bing, bada boom, bada bang. A touch of Parmesan. A touch of chili flakes. Should I go right or left? Right or left? I'm gonna go a little bit more finesse. The chiffonade. Dang. So we'll use this one for the other pizza. And there you go, folks. Bannock pizza. Wow, I gotta say I am by no means a chef, but I will definitely be trying a Bannock pizza in the very near future. Now you can also use your own Bannock recipe, or if you like, check out mrbannock.com to order one of his mixes. And Chicago has deep dish and New York has its famous wide slices, but what about Thompson style pizza? Co-owner Kenny Braun just called in to let us know that they have the biggest Facebook following of any restaurant in Manitoba, roughly about 9,000 followers. He says they sell between 70 and 100 pizzas a day. And our friend at CTV photojournalist Jamie Dowsett shows you how it's done in northern Manitoba and where you can grab a slice in Winnipeg. Well, a Thompson style pizza is a pizza that comes from the north. The dough itself almost weighs two pounds. It's really a, about a, a tangy sauce. Uh, there's shredded meat and also sliced meat. And, and a lot of cheese, really. It's, it's a really thick pizza. The crust has to be able to hold the meat. I heard that it's a Chicago style with a New York twist. Uh, you know, we started off with zero dollars and in Six months, we're going to be sitting on a brick and mortar. So, I think that uh, the pizza really uh, speaks for itself. We do about 50, 60 pizzas here, but sometimes uh, we were we're turning away 100 orders, 150 orders. And the people of Thompson, you know, they they say you got to try this pizza, and for them, it's it's uh, sharing a piece of their home. They've talked about it for years. Oh, if you ever go up to Thompson, try the pizza. Now the pizza's here and they're trying it, they're getting their friends to try it. Deep emotional connection uh, with this pizza for a lot of people. And we hope to develop that with, uh, you know, the younger generations of Winnipeg. Oh, I wish I had some pizza right now. All right, so we're talking about pizza in Northern Manitoba and there's one that is cherished at Opasquay Cree Nation near the Paw, and that's James O'Rourke's Pizza. Now he's known as Jimmy Two Times and his food Jimmy Num Nums. We've got him on the line now with us from the Ocean the Paw area. Jimmy, thanks so much for being on with us today. Good afternoon, and how are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Now your you pizza- You must be a little bit hungry right now. <laughs> oh man, you have no idea. I wish I had some pizza sitting right here with me. <laughs> um, but your pizza has a long history at OCN. Can you tell us the backstory? Uh, my spouse, her dad used to make the pizzas here in the Paw, and he taught his kids how to make them and then she showed me and our goal is to show our kids and continue the tradition and make it just really good pizza for all the people in the community. Now our social media went absolutely berserk with people giving shout outs to their favorite, favorite pizza and people certainly tagged your pizzas for us. What do you think it is about pizza that makes it so beloved? I think it's because I try and make our customers happy with what they get. Well, that's a great answer. And as we just saw in, the, in that last clip there, Thompson is laying claim to its own style of pizza. Do you think there uh, may be a little bit of a pizza battle going on between Thompson and the Paw? It, it could be, but uh, I don't think it's about a battle. I think it's about making everyone happy. All right, and do you have a favorite pizza somewhere that, other than your own pizza that uh, you, you like to get? Like if I was to go to Winnipeg, I would look for a gondola. Gondola <laughs> pizza, yeah, that's a good pizza. I think that's probably my favorite too. Um, Jimmy, thank you so much for joining us uh, for a few minutes here on uh, APTN and Focus and talking a little bit about uh, how you got your start. Yeah, the, the, the main thing is that anybody can do anything that they want. Like uh, we're on a reserve and 
uh, as long as you follow the provincial guidelines and and make food and health and sa- safety happy, that anyone can do anything in any form of business for the future. Because I think the kids need to know that they can do anything they want in the future if they put their mind to it. Perfect. Certainly great advice. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, it's time now for a quick break, uh, but when we return, we go to Nova Scotia and see how pizza is done on the East Coast. Welcome back to APTN In Focus, where we're putting pizza in focus. Joining us now is a familiar face, our former colleague Amber Bernard and her parents Tina and Leonard Bernard. They just recently recently opened up Sky Mountain Pizza in Wagoma three weeks ago, and the success is almost too hard to keep up with. Guys, thank you so much for being here. I am very excited to be talking to you today. Thank you. Now, uh, just as I mentioned, you guys haven't even been open a month, and you're getting calls sometimes even after close. I mean, we just got a call and, and commercial break. How's this uh, first three weeks been for you? Busy. Non-stop. And, and it's like uh, we didn't know we were going to run a marathon. Let's put it that way. <laughs> you know how that feels when you think you're going to run the mile? Yeah, and then you're like, oh, I did not prepare for this. Every day, I, you know, we were really, really running off our feet, eh? It's just going, going, going. It's going. good. It's yeah. a good busy. It's a really good busy. It, it, was, it took us by surprise. So the first day we opened, we, we talked to the supplier for our pizza and everything and our cheese and everything all. And he says, okay, this should be good. This should last you a One week. Case. Week's worth of supply. And then we opened the first day. We were in 10 hours. We were, we were gone. It was done. We had nothing. Panicking for cheese. We, we couldn't open the next day because we had to reorder. So it was like, wow, this one kind of overwhelmingly quick was unreal. Yeah. Wow, a week's worth in, in one day. Um, all right, so how did you get started in the pizza business? What kind of led to you and your family opening up this restaurant? Well, I, Mom, you want to say it? I was just going to say, you know, pizza's been a family tradition for so long because when we were little there was a bunch of us and mom used to make pizza on the weekend so mom you want to tell them how it's a recipe being made over what 20 years <laughs> 20, 20 years yeah over a little over 20 years we uh were a small family we lived on welfare about what, 400 every two weeks yeah under and so we would feel good if we had money left over to get tim hortons get something small for the kids and then i realized oh my goodness, I just got to start making pizza for them. And so that's when we began to do that. And it just stayed, whether we worked or went to school, Fridays and Saturdays were our pizza days at home. So we just kept developing the the recipe, the the bread and everything. So, yeah. Well, I'm sure many people can relate to that story for sure. Um, And historically, there hasn't really been very many indigenous owned businesses, uh, but we're seeing more and more pop up over the over the years years included why do you think that is I think it's um and this gets to me uh when I talk about it and I I talk about it wherever I can um we have not had access and opportunity right across Canada Indigenous people were left out of the economic system um by policy design and on purpose and so in our neck of the woods uh we had legislation that uh, would prevent us from even being doctors. Um, but we've always persevered. We had our small sort of basket making people who did that. And um, I've always, we've always had entrepreneurial people in our lives. Always, yeah. Always. And uh, so looking at that, and I, and I think um, for the Indian, we got Indian Day School money. Um, some sad stuff happened while we were there, and both of us. And um, we thought, you know, we're getting into, um, the second half of the century of our of age, <laughs> or one century, a little, and a uh, half a century. And so I thought, well, let's leave something for our children, and um, invest our money, whatever we have, in this pizza shop. And that's what we did. We committed our monies um, to do that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What is your favorite part about this pizza making venture? Oh, I. You Sorry. go ahead. Go ahead. Have you ever said anything yet? I want to hear from you, honey. Yeah. 
I was just going to say, for me, it's been such a joy being able to work with my mom and dad and see them really pursue their dreams, because this has been a lifelong dream. I remember my parents talking about this when I was just a little girl, and we didn't have the means to get it. And then when they got their Indian day school money, which really, it's a tragedy if you think about all the stuff our parents and our, our relatives had to go through at those schools. And then for my mom and dad, I'm going to try to say this without crying, is they were able to really turn it around and make it into something positive. Mm -hmm. And that's something uh, I'm sure, like I said, a lot of people could certainly relate to. Um, now, you guys are getting calls and orders nonstop. I have to ask, what is the most popular pizza request that you guys get? Go ahead, Dad. <laughs> He's well, it's, it's the Sasquatch pizza. Yeah. Why, why, do they why is it the Sasquatch pizza? I think they like the, the name, the, the taste of it, and, and who makes it. Well, we it? got four different meats that people have not yeah. put together before. Yeah. And if anything is going to bring Sasquatch out of the woods, it's going to be this pizza. <laughs> I truly believe that. <laughs> He'll come knocking on the door. He might have. I missed it a couple <laughs> times. But, um, yeah, and so he was always called Sasquatch. Um, My whole life. Yeah. He's the last 30 years was just like um, a community guy here, just Sasquatch. And then, and then of course, was that. And then, my social media, they'll throw Sasquatch at me. The other day, uh, a relative of mine sent in a ribbon skirt of uh, Sasquatch on the front of the ribbon skirt. And she said, I think your wife will look pretty in this. She goes, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, I said, right? I got a, I got a plate from the same person. And it's, Sas it's Sasquatch on the plate. And it's uh, it's got the seven Mi'kmaq virtues on now. it. So, so what, what's, just, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. What's on the no, Sasquatch no, pizza? What is it? What's on it? Oh, we have uh, what's on it is um. Oh, real... we're giving our secret away. Oh yeah. Um, That's okay. We'll I can be all right. We got okay. four four meats. It's Go ahead. <laughs> we gotta think about that. That's good. <laughs> we're new business people, so. So it's okay. a it's a certain bacon. It's a certain <laughs> salami. It's a certain pepperoni, and it's don't air me. <laughs> yeah. All right, you guys we aren't giving the secrets away. All right, you guys aren't yeah. giving the secrets. I had to ask. Um, sure. okay. all right. And with all of this early success, are you guys thinking about expansion at all? I mean, like I said, it's, it hasn't even been a month, but are you guys thinking we about have, that at all? We have to. There was yeah. like within the first about a week and a half, we were like, oh God, we need a bigger building. We need another pizza oven. Um, when it's really busy, we've got pizzas made, but they're waiting to get into the oven. Um, we can fit four extra large in there. We just made some for the band office today. Um, so we. That was that went well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we do need to expand already, um, and we're uh, we already have that in the in the works, planning for the, the spring. Well, hopefully that can certainly come to fruition and uh, ease the the tension a little bit with all the the calls <laughs> and the busyness. Um, all right, I have to ask. Out of the three of you, who makes the better pizza? I don't want to cause any trouble here, but. Uh, I, I gotta ask it. There. Amber's not in the room. She can't point at us. <laughs> it's it's not, it's my mom. My mom has been the powerhouse behind this business. She's the one that's been working so hard for months to bring this to reality. She's the pizza maker. She makes the best pizza. And all of Mi'kma'ki, I want to say bravely. <laughs> That's wait a minute. Um, Hold on, you're causing a fight now. Sasquatch it's a tribal war. We don't need that. <laughs> Sasquatch. I don't want that. <laughs> to all the grandmas and aunties out there, we all do the best. <laughs> uh, yep. <laughs> oh, guys, this has been uh, just a, a great uh, time, and uh, I can't thank you guys enough for being on here and. Uh, Thanks, Darren. Wish you guys nothing but uh, the best of success, and it seems like uh, you guys are certainly on that track already. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Aww. All right. Well, that's a wrap for you on In Focus, and I don't know about you, but uh, I'm hungry. Uh, it's a good thing Melissa sent uh, me and the hardworking EPTN crew this pie from Thompson Style Pizza. Now, there's two big pies here. I don't think I'm going to eat them all. Uh, but before we get into me eating the actual pizza here, if you want to see if there's some deadly pizza near you, you can check out our post on the APTN News Facebook page. It's gotten over 350 comments, so make sure to check that out. And this episode of In Focus will be available uh, for download as a podcast on our website, aptnnews.ca backslash podcast. And if you missed any of the shows and you want to catch up, you can check out our website, aptnnews.ca. 
Thank you for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your day and maybe have a slice or two of pizza, which I think I'm gonna do right about now. Let me try this out here.